Ra Vasco da Gama. In our next episode of Around the Table Show Book Event Edition, we come through a book with an intriguing title, Beyond the Century of Endeavor, a Catholic History in Kenya. Twenty years ago, I published a book, A Century of Catholic Endeavor, which was a study of the work of the Holy Ghost Fathers and the Consolata Fathers in Kenya from the very beginning. And I had conducted that study alongside the study of the work of the Presbyterian Church in Kenya and the work of the Anglican Church. Pauline's Publications Africa, in partnership with the Capuchin Television, brings you an intriguing book event, Beyond Century of Endeavor, that chronicles the history of the Catholic Church in Kenya, authored by Father Lawrence Njoroge. So far, we have been able to collaborate with Capuchin TV, especially through the launching of our books. And it has been so effective when we began. And this was during the coronavirus, the year 2020 when we ventured into online book launching and especially our collaboration with Caption TV. We have seen a lot of growth in our market, expanding and many views from all over the world. And people are interested even more to learn what the Pauline's publications are doing when it comes to publication of books. The book is a story of a community of faith established in this country over a century ago. The author, Father Lawrence, uses his immense knowledge of the church, Kenyan society and agents of change to bring to light the interaction between the church and the social institutions. I did history covering the history of the Catholic Church from the very, very beginning. The arrival of Vasco da Gama in our coast at Mombasa in the year 1498. I did an analysis of that and uh, having covered the initial mission i then decided to interview 32 people who are involved in evangelization using the kenya conference of catholic bishops kccb archives he comprehensively expanded the field of study and updated his previous book on the history of the catholic church in kenya he thoroughly explores the role of politics religion education family economics and recreation to illustrate the role of evangelization leading to sustainable human development in Kenya. That uh, book published in the year 1999 and which was then reissued in the year 2001, it became necessary to update a history of the Catholic Church in Kenya. Quite an interesting and engrossing book that you cannot miss out this is going to be launched on the 29th of June, 2023, live on Capuchin Television Network. The guest speaker will be His Grace Philip Subira Agnolo, Archbishop of Nairobi Archdiocese. So do not miss out on this uh, perfect opportunity to nourish your faith. I will be your host, Asasha Elizabeth, as well as others who will be available to throw in weight in the discussion. Get a copy of the book in the following bookshops. The Catholic Bookshop at the Holy Family Basilica, Nairobi CBD. Pauline's Communications Center in Ring Road, Westlands. Gabriella House near Jaquat, Langata Campus. Pauline's Books and Media Center in Kisumu, off Kisumu Kakamega Road in Mukedwa, next to Dominican Friars. You can also order a soft copy of the book online by visiting the online shop at www. .polinesafrica.org Looking at our current society today, especially with the influx of digital media, we have realized that many young people are into online reading, online research, and sometimes they spend a lot of time because they want quick answers. As we engage with the social media, but we should not also forget the culture of reading, especially when it comes to hard copies. Because as Pope Francis says, sometimes we get so much obsecured from the world and we form our own individual cocoons where we don't even look out to see the needs of our brothers and sisters. So the books kind of also come in, the publications that we are doing, 
come in to encourage us to look at our neighbor on the other side. Not only to be with our digital devices, but to remember there is somebody next door who needs my word, who needs my encounter. Keep watching Capuchin TV, your Catholic identity. Well, it is Thursday, 29th of June, 2023, and uh, exactly 30 eight minutes past 4 p.m. East African time. We are coming to you live from Pauline's Communication Center along Ring Road in Westlands. And you are right on time for this significant book event on Around the Table show with me, Sasha Elizabeth. It is a literally work with a gripping title, Beyond the Century of Endeavor, A History of the Catholic Church in Kenya penned down by Reverend Professor Njoroge Lawrence, who builds on the previous work that he published in 1999, titled Century of Catholic Endeavor. Now today in the Catholic liturgical feast calendar, it is the solemnity of apostles Peter and Paul, our faith ancestors and the very ones who handed over to us the message of life. And on this great day, we are honored to have our shepherd right here, Most Reverend Philip Subira Nyolo, uh, the Archbishop of the Senior Most Archdiocese in Nairobi. Your Grace, I greet you. Yeah, good evening. Good evening to you too. Kindly Thank say you. a word to the viewer. Uh, good evening to the viewers. I'm very grateful to be together with you here today as we endeavor also to understand the depths of the faith we have as disseminated to us through uh, the servant of God, Maurice Cardinal Tunga, on this feast day of St. Peter and Paul. Thank you very much, Your Grace, for making time for this discussion. We are really honored to have you today on Around the Table show. And of course, it has been, we have been postponing this because of your tight schedule. But here we are, and as believers, we hold that uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. Indeed, All right, yeah. and with me here, as usual, we have uh, the mastermind, the person who penned down or authored the book, uh, who is uh, Reverend Professor Lawrence Njoroge, a diocesan priest in the Archdiocese of uh, Nairobi, and uh, he is a man who wears so many hearts. I just allow him to tell us more that he does. Yeah, thank you very much. Hello, viewers. At the present moment, I have been posted to St. Augustine's Parish and the University Chaplaincy in Juja. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I work in a parish, St. Augustine's Parish. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I am chaplain at the Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology. I have been there for the last uh, 22 years as chaplain and uh, as professor mm -hmm. in the College for Human Resource Development. And uh, His Grace has recently appointed me or confirmed my appointment as the Vice Postulator or the Director of the Beatification of the Servant of God, Maurice Cardno Otunga. And I am very, very grateful that I have been asked to serve the Catholic Church mm -hmm. in those areas. Thank you. All right, I'd like just to congratulate you. I understand that this book ha was launched last year in November, but it is really worth it to have it and, uh, of course, come through it and enlighten people more about what it's all about. So the book, uh, in, uh, A Century of Endeavor, A History of the Catholic Church in Kenya, Dear Viewer, <coughs> chronicles antecedents uh, to modern Christian missions, and it takes us down the historical lane to the Vasco da Gama era. Uh, this will Towns and all that. It brings uh, in the interaction of, between Islam, African traditions, Christianity, and all that, as well as addressing the most the contemporary challenges that the country is facing. We are going to get to know more about that just uh, in a few minutes. But we are set to come through this book. It is a 528-page book, uh, and. Uh, 
I have the right people with me here. Today being the solemnity, as I mentioned, of uh, St. Peter and Paul, and I, I was made to understand that his grace centered or specialized his studies on St. Paul. We are going to get just a snippet of that uh, shortly. But as usual, I will guide the two guests in giving us some insights on this. But feel free to weigh in as well virtually on our social media platforms. We are live on Facebook and YouTube, Capuchin TV, Facebook Capuchin Television Network. The hashtag to use is Around the Table Show, hashtag Capuchin TV. And uh, of course, you can drop your SMS or uh, just a, a call, a direct call. We are going to get in case you have your comments or questions that you wish to direct to our guest today direct the question to 0717424866 or 0741114031 so off we start uh, and we start uh, with the author uh, professor lawrence usually a book title is a key aspect of any literary work it reflects the author's perspective and cues the reader into what they should expect in the book. What really influenced your title, Century of Endeavor, and the subtitle, A History of the Catholic Church in Kenya? Thank you very much. As you already said earlier on, this work is partly based on a previous work mm -hmm. because in the year 1999, I was able to publish my PhD dissertation, and it was done by Pauline's Publications Africa. The initial work, A Century of a Catholic Endeavor, had focused on two religious congregations in Kenya, the Holy Ghost Fathers and the Consolata Missionaries. That was one factor. And what I was doing in the initial study is I was asking what is the impact of the work of the Holy Ghost Fathers and the Consolata Missionaries in Kenya, especially on education and development. Therefore, this work was restricted to those two. Mm -hmm. And it covered uh, the history of the Catholic Church in Kenya from 1498 up to about the year 1999. Mm -hmm. It was based on research in the archives. I had been able to consult the Kenya National Archive and the religious archives in Kenya, in Rome, in France, in Britain, and in Ireland, looking at the old missionary records, mm -hmm. specifically of the Holy Ghost and of the Consolata Fathers. Mm -hmm. What has informed this book is that I have expanded the area of inquiry. Instead of simply now restricting myself to the Holy Ghost and to the Consolata Fathers, I have looked at all the 26 dioceses in Kenya, because there are 26 dioceses. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I have received the information from the Association of the Sisterhoods of Kenya, and also from all the associations of the men religious in Kenya, mm -hmm. about 70 of them. And the Association of the Sisterhoods of Kenya, almost 170 of them. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, the Kenya Catholic bishops, the KCCB, very, very generously allowed me into the archive. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I was able to look at the archive of the Kenya bishops, Thank you very much to the chairman of the Kenya Conference of Catholic Bishops, mm -hmm. Bishop Kevuva Musande, the Archbishop of Mombasa, through the help of my own, through the good offices mm -hmm. of my own Archbishop. And therefore, this is a wider work. It covers all the diocese. It covers all the congregations of men, associations of men, religious, and of women, religious, and I would like to thank the leadership of the AOSK, Sister mm -hmm. Kangogo, and uh, Sister Pasilisa. I would like to thank Father Ireri of the Association of the Men Religious in Kenya, and also Father Lugonzo of the KCCB, because they opened to me the archives. <coughs> All right. Yes, and then 
I interviewed 32 people who are practitioners of um, the faith in various areas, mm -hmm. ranging from bishops, priests, religious sisters, catechists, ordinary faithful, 32 of them, and educationists. And I asked them what is happening to the faith at the present moment. Thank you, Reverend Njoroge, for uh, further giving us an insight on how you went about compiling this piece. We really appreciate that great work. And uh, uh, allow me to uh, direct the next question to uh, His Grace. Your Grace, you first of all, thank you for taking time to inscribe a preface to this uh, uh, book, which is so key in our church, the Catholic Church. So in the preface, you observe that uh, the author has completely rewritten his previous work which has focused on evangelization efforts of the Holy Ghost and the consular missions. Could you please give us an overview and maybe what is novel about this uh, new book because we have the previous one, Century of the Catholic Endeavor and Century of Endeavor a Catholic History, a History of the Catholic Church in Kenya. Thank you. Uh, the other of the book Beyond Century of Endeavor, a History of Catholic Church in Kenya, uh, Lawrence, is an educationist and indeed is a professor in matters education mm -hmm. and uh, he gathers and has gathered a lot of information and knowledge, not only for the church in Kenya, but the church, uh, the universal church, the Catholic church in which we place uh, the works of St. Paul, mm -hmm. because he was a missionary uh, for the Universal Church, and also we place the foundations of St. Peter on whom the church was built. So uh, there are two things here we want to look at as we reflect on the book mm -hmm. that uh, has been written for us as a legacy and also as a treasure of, uh, of faith in this particular place, uh, Kenya, where we want to look at uh, the Christian faith mm -hmm. and in a special way the Catholic faith, how it is rooted in the lives of the people along the line of the work that was done by our first missionaries and that is especially his eminent John, uh, John uh, uh, Morris Cardinal Otunga. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we know around the time he comes, the book goes far beyond up to the time of Vasco da Kama. That's mm -hmm. the time when the, uh, the Christianity comes in with the uh, explorers who are moving around the Indian Ocean, going to India and elsewhere. But then Kenya, the coast, becomes very vital for them. And uh, they leave their seed of evangelization. Call it Francis Xavier. It's an example of what was left there. Uh, but at the same time, uh, this seed grows into the interior of Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, we realize how the missionaries came and as it has been explained uh, by the author of a book, in that very book, that uh, we had the Holy Ghost Fathers who came from the coast and the, along the coast from Zanzibar into Mombasa and across into Nairobi Machakos. And then we have also the conservators who came in and uh, in central Kenya and then they went towards uh, uh, the Eastern Kenya. But in the Western, we had also the Mithil Fathers who went on across into Uganda. Mm -hmm. But Western also became like an area where evangelization came in reverse because the missionaries who went to Uganda, the Mithil, came in reverse gear back to Kenya. Mm -hmm. And that's how the, the, the missions began in, in, in that area. And that's the area where his uh, uh, eminent um, Maurice Cardinal Tunga was actually born and nurtured. So we'd mm -hmm. say he has that seed of the missionaries who are the middle also as well. Mm -hmm. But then he looks beyond, through and beyond that seed of the missionaries, so the middle hills, mm -hmm. uh, in the sense that uh, he impressed on himself the sense of the universal aspect of faith. Uh, uh, so much so that even after being ordained as a, a, a priest and then a bishop first in Western Kenya, he was sent to Nairobi. And here, as a cardinal, we can see that uh, uh, he did uh, a lot of marvelous work in proclaiming this very good news that touches the hearts of not only the people where he has been, yeah. but goes beyond the boundaries of the 
people where they are living into the hearts of many others mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to say they, it sends us on this aspect, maybe for the young people and even for us as Christians now to reflect, who is this, uh, who is, who is this uh, Maurice Cardinal Otunga? I, uh, we can describe him and find in many words and many, th many, many sentences that people understand him. But for me, I would want to, at this time, to shorten and summarize, maybe in three words, um, and I quote them, maybe in the, in the book of Prophet Mika, uh, knowing uh, who he was, Cardinal uh, Otunga, I want to say he, he was a man, and uh, I mean a shepherd of God, who acted very, very justly to everybody, as is indicated in the uh, authorship of uh, Father, uh, Father Lawrence Njoroge. And knowing his stresses, how he has gone and where he has gone and what he has done within the church of Kenya, again, we can quote again from Mika and say he was a man full of love. He loved and he loved tenderly all he touched to. He loved his priests. He loved the, 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 the congregation of people, consecrated lives. He loved the Christians. He was indeed a shepherd in uh, all, the, all, all the manners. And he walked humbly with God. He was a holy man. He was a very holy man. And this, we want to say, these are the focal points of here. But in looking beyond that, I want just to set on another example because he was one of the first African leaders in Africa, and in, a, in a, 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 a cardinals in Africa, particularly in Kenya. And he was there as a bishop when, when Kenya was uh, got independence. I want us to be looking at him, even as it's written in the book there, uh, the role he played in nourishing the patriotism of. Uh, the Kenyans in their own country. Thank yeah. you very much, Your yeah. Grace, mm -hmm. and for that in-depth explanation. I know you might be asking yourself why uh, His Grace uh, Philip Agnolo is uh, emphasizing on uh, uh, the late servant of God, uh, Maurice Michael Cardinal Otunga. It is because uh, this book, uh, it's a, an entire chapter has been dedicated to him, and that directs us all, sends us to our next question, which I will direct it to the author. After um, his grace, uh, that is, uh, in your previous interview, uh, Professor Lawrence, you were quoted saying that this book is filled with the spirit of the servant of God, uh, Maurice Cardinal Otunga. And again, you say that uh, if truth be told, uh, it is the reason, the main reason why you set out to, to write this book. And you dedicated an entire chapter, almost an entire chapter to him. How did his life and persona generally uh, influence or fuel you needed to pen down this piece? Thank you very much. There is no doubt that uh, the person of the servant of God, Maurice Meiko Kadno Otunga, impacted on people and it impacted on people for the better. I would like to share with you two events, two experiences that some people witnessed in this country. I was a seminarian in the year 1977, sent to Lyoki Parish. And I remember school children writing a letter to Maurice Michael Cardno Otunga, saying that they were happy because he had visited the year parish and the year school in Ikino. Ikino is a village in Lioki Parish. It's now a parish on its own. But in those days, it was part of Lioki Parish. Children in Standard 5 and 6 writing a letter to the Cardinal saying, you came and we were very, very happy to meet you. A week or two later, Cardinal Otunga responded to that letter. Wow. Saying that he had received the year letter, and that he was very happy for having received a letter from them and encouraging them to do good, to be obedient to their parents, and to concentrate on their education. Here is a person who had, I will not say the common touch, but who cared for people. You can imagine what the schedule of uh, a cardinal in the Catholic Church is like. But he takes time in order to write a letter to school children. Yesterday, I was in discussion with a person. We were having a cup of tea. 
And that person reminded me that he visited Cardinal Otunga's house in Lovington, and that Cardinal Otunga served him tea. He himself served him tea yeah. and gave him biscuits. He still remembers that. And of course, many people in this country recall that incident when a priest of the Archdiocese of Nairobi, mm -hmm. Father Joseph Rogano, was picked up by security agents and locked up in a police cell in Kiambu. And Cardinal Otunga went there in the evening accompanied by Father John Kyongo, mm -hmm. who was then dean of Limuru. And Cardinal Otunga very, very politely addressed the officer commanding station, mm -hmm. kindly release my priest mm -hmm. or, or lock, lock me up, up in, in these cells. <laughs> Great that tickets. was Cardinal Otunga. It's quite a he resounding. showed care and concern for the people of God, mm -hmm. not only for Catholics, but as his grace mentioned, he was a patriot. He cared and loved this country mm -hmm. and the people, the citizens and the residents of this country. Thank you very much, Professor. I think that statement, it, uh, it makes a resounding uh, or reverberates in most of our, our minds how uh, the servant of God, uh, is Calibas, a religious person, a leader, would uh, make that step, that is servant leadership, an exemplar. So now, uh, at this point, we also understand that uh, the late servant of God, Maurice Cardinal Kutunga, actually sponsored your first publication uh, from which this current publication reflects a century of Catholic endeavor, right? So it is worth mentioning that. Yes. I would like to begin by saying that it was the servant of God, Maurice Michael Cardinal Otunga, who ordained me priest wow. at St. Joseph's High School, Gidongori, mm -hmm. in February 1981, together with the late Father William Ulama. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is a fact, and that is a reality that is imprinted upon my person. To have been not only ordained by the servant of God, Maurice Michael Cardinal Otunga, uh, but uh, he continuing to be interested in my work as a priest. Mm -hmm. And not just in my work, but in me as a person. Therefore, it was not simply a utilitarian approach where he is interested because you are a worker but he was interested in people as persons. Thank you. And it was him that later sent me for further studies at the University of Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. And uh, immediately after completing my studies, he suggested uh, that we publish this book in the year 1999. And therefore, he sponsored my travels in this country and in Europe to collect data from the archives. And he followed keenly on the progress that uh, I was making in this work. Thank and you. therefore, in a very, very true sense, this book, the initial book, A Century of a Catholic Endeavor, I owe it to many people, but principally to the servant of God, Maurice Michael Cardinal Tunga, and uh, PPA, Pauline's Publications Africa, were Gracias. good enough to publish it, and I am very, very grateful All for right. that too. We appreciate that. Yes. Uh, and uh, moving forward, the Catholic Church, I'll direct this question to His Grace. The Catholic Church has proved to be very key in integral human development, investing and touching different aspects of life. As some people speak of growth, and uh, expansion of the Catholic Church in Kenya. Others claim there is a massive exodus of faithfuls converting to other religions and uh, denominations. What is your take about that? Uh, again, uh, my take is that uh, the, the church for sure is growing very fast and growing very fast not only geographically but also uh, deep into the lives of the people. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, I want to attribute this also back also to the Second Vatican Council, uh, which grew all along in the history, uh, in the understanding of what the church is, what was the message of Christ uh, all along the history, and translated and uh, interpreted in the Second Vatican Council. 
Uh, the council in which also uh, uh, his MNs, uh, Morris Cardinal Tunga, was a member, he attended. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, such a time when he came back to Kenya, he was still a bishop. And uh, shortly after that, as indicated in the book, he was uh, uh, Archbishop of Nairobi. Mm, and uh, looking at what uh, has happened all along after the Second Vatican Council, which we are actually still translating and reliving mm -hmm. up to now, to gather the, me the meaning and the sense of Christ's message into the people of life. Uh, uh, the message is that uh, his uh, eminent uh, uh, Maurice Otunga uh, captured the spirit of the Second Vatican Council and he captured the spirit of Christ in the current situation that was there as mm -hmm. interpreted by the Second Vatican Council, which is not very different now. Uh, it's the same, but only that uh, uh, things change around the same object and mm -hmm. such. So uh, in order to uh, make it even more understandable, uh, we can see how this, the church was is structured, even the Diocese of Nairobi, mm -hmm. and the now in the church in, the church in Africa, and perhaps something that can be imitated even where the church has begun again. One thing to say, uh, leadership uh, was also uh, given to be shared by the lay, uh, the lay people in the church. Because they are, by their virtue of baptism, they, are also, they have also that strength of spirit and they are called with the very, um, very same aspect of everybody, even consecrated, mm -hmm. uh, to walk and to be holy in life. Mm -hmm. And that one can, can be shown well and can be done and can be lived, uh, not only uh, coming to attend the service in the church, but in the way of our life everywhere. Uh, that is the sense of the style of life should be the sense of uh, style of Jesus Christ himself, mm -hmm. the style of God, what our God wants, the, good, the goodness of the people to emerge, to come properly out of, the, uh, out of their lives and uh, so that they are out and in the life for one another as such. And this is what, again, we want to see, like, uh, his eminence gathered and around the time of the Second Vatican Council, and which he brought around to us. It is very current in the church here in Nairobi, uh, where we have a lot of uh, movements. CWA, we have group, we have CMA, CMA, we have youth, we have uh, the family life, and so many other things that pertain to the real core meaning of our Christian life and our human dignity. Mm -hmm. So we should say um, his life and the content in which we are living now is still compatible. So and that's why we, uh, we have reason and we have chance to read the history of the church in Kenya and to read also that chapter that is indicating the, how uh, Cardinal uh, lived in that history and how his life interprets itself in that history, in the Second Vatican Council and as such. Mm. So actually, uh, we go by uh, the, the, former, mm. the former statement that, that the Catholic Church is actually growing and expanding. Mm. The other news is we can consider that as hot hair, Professor. First of all, I do not know if a systematic study regarding departures in the church has been carried out. Mm -hmm. What we know is that in the Catholic Church, uh, there are returns that are made every year. Mm -hmm. Holy returns, they are called. Mm -hmm. And uh, His Grace is very, very familiar with that process because it is part of His work that mm -hmm. every year the statistics of persons that have been baptized, that have been confirmed, that have been married in the Catholic Church, therefore there are statistics mm -hmm. regarding the number of persons who are either associating with the Catholic Church or entering the Catholic Church or receiving sacraments in the Catholic Church. But I do not know that uh, there has been a systematic study about uh, departures. What we know is that there is a lively Catholic community in this country and that is very, very grateful to God mm -hmm. because of the gift of the faith. The gift of the Catholic Church is regarded as a gift because uh, people do experience the positive impact that has been made by the church in their lives. 
in the areas of education, in the areas of uh, socioeconomic uh, development. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing I would like to mention regarding the servant of God, Maurice Michael Cardinal Otunga, uh, because I do not want to miss that out. It is good that it is His Grace and myself who are speaking here. Looking around, I can see people who knew the servant of God, Maurice Michael Cardinal Otunga. That's quite interesting. I can see people <laughs> who served in the church with the servant of God, Maurice Michael Cardinal Otunga. Mm -hmm. Madam jo, uh, Joan Makodawa is here. Mm -hmm. She is the person that received Maurice Michael Cardinal Otunga into the Holy Family Basilica because she was in the parish pastoral council when he came to address the Catholics of the Archdiocese of Nairobi at Kenya. She mm -hmm. welcomed him. I remember that in 1998 or 1999. Mm -hmm. And it was her who always served him tea at the meals. It is wonderful that she is here. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we are talking of a person who had uh, a beneficial impact. Mm -hmm. You see, to meet Cardinal Otunga was to was for one to feel that you are in the presence of he brought god to people there Wonderful. is not a doubt uh, about that Wonderful. and there is no doubt that there are many many people even persons that are not catholics that were drawn to the faith and who respect the catholic faith because of the witness and because of the example that they saw in the person of the servant of God, Maurice Meiko Kadno Otunga. Madam Makodawa and the others, it is wonderful that you are here and that you have been able to join us yes. in this. She knew the servant of God and the others too knew the servant of God very, very yeah, well. Sure. Sister we Olga did. also did. Sister Olga Masango, we have uh, uh, Tom and uh, Lynette yes, Lichuma. So it is time to take a break, but when we come back during the official unveiling and uh, getting a message from his grace, we are going to invite some of them here just uh, to uh, display this book uh, as uh, we hear from uh, uh, his grace uh, what he has to say today on this occasion. So right now the director tells me it is time to take a breather as usual. So we we take a brief break and we'll be right back with more on this book event a century beyond century of endeavor a history of the catholic church in kenya so stay tuned The earliest traces of the Catholic Church in Kenya date back to the 1498th year of the Common Era, with the earliest missionaries who penetrated the country led by the Portuguese explorer Vasco da Gama. In our next episode of Around the Table Show Book Event Edition, we come through a book with an intriguing title beyond a century of endeavor a catholic history in kenya 20 years ago i published a book a century of catholic endeavor which was a study of the work of the holy ghost fathers and the consulate of fathers in kenya from the very beginning and i had conducted that study alongside the study of the work of the Presbyterian Church in Kenya and the work of the Anglican Church. Pauline's Publications Africa, in partnership with the Capuchin Television, brings you an intriguing book event, Beyond Century of Endeavor, that chronicles the history of the Catholic Church in Kenya, authored by Father Lawrence Njoroge. So far, we have been able to collaborate with Capuchin TV, especially through the launching of our books. And it has been so effective when we began, and this was during the coronavirus, the year 2020, when we ventured into online book launching and especially our collaboration with Caption TV. We have seen a lot of growth in our market, expanding and many views from all over the world, and people are interested even more to learn what the Pauline's publications are doing 
when it comes to publication of books. The book is a story of a community of faith established in this country over a century ago. The author, Father Lawrence, uses his immense knowledge of the church, Kenyan society and agents of change to bring to light the interaction between the church and the social institutions. I did history covering the history of the Catholic Church from the very, very beginning. The arrival of Vasco da Gama in our coast at Mombasa in the year 1498. I did an analysis of that and uh, having covered the initial mission, I then decided to interview 32 people who are involved in evangelization. Using the Kenya Conference of Catholic Bishops KCCB archives, he comprehensively expanded the field of study and updated his previous book on the history of the Catholic Church in Kenya. He thoroughly explores the role of politics, religion, education, family, economics and recreation to illustrate the role of evangelization leading to sustainable human development in Kenya. That uh, book published in the year 1999 and which was then reissued in the year 2001, it became necessary to update a history of the Catholic Church in Kenya. Quite an interesting and engrossing book that you cannot miss out this is going to be launched on the 29th of June, 2023, live on Capuchin Television Network. The guest speaker will be His Grace Philip Subira Agnolo, Archbishop of Nairobi Archdiocese. So do not miss out on this uh, perfect opportunity to nourish your faith. I will be your host, Asasha Elizabeth, as well as others who will be available to throw in weight in the discussion. Get a copy of the book in the following bookshops. The Catholic Bookshop at the Holy Family Basilica, Nairobi CBD. Pauline's Communications Center in Ring Road, Westlands. Gabriella House near Jaquat, Langata Campus. Pauline's Books and Media Center in Kisumu, off Kisumu Kakamega Road in Mukedwa, next to Dominican Friars. You can also order a soft copy of the book online by visiting the online shop at www.paulinesafrica.org. Looking at our current society today, especially with the influx of digital media, we have realized that many young people are into online reading, online research, and sometimes they spend a lot of time because they want quick answers. As we engage with the social media, but we should not also forget the culture of reading, especially when it comes to hard copies, because as Pope Francis says, sometimes we get so much obsecured from the world and we form our own individual cocoons where we don't even look out to see the needs of our brothers and sisters. So the books kind of also come in, the publications that we are doing come in to encourage us to look at our neighbor on the other side. Not only to be with our digital devices, but to remember there is somebody next door who needs my word, who needs my encounter. Keep watching Capuchin TV, your Catholic identity. Welcome back, dear view, and we are glad that you are still keeping tabs with us on this day as we unveil to you this book event right here live from the Pauline's Communication Center in Westland. This is the second session of our discussion, and uh, I, we are graced with uh, the presence of uh, Most Reverend Philip Agnolo as our guest speaker and the author of the book uh, uh, Beyond a Century of Endeavor, a Catholic History. Uh, a history of the Catholic Church in Kenya, rather. That is uh, Professor Lawrence Njoroge. So welcome back. Uh, and uh, passion, passionate historians are conversant uh, with uh, the term uh, Periplus of the Eritrean Sea, a Roman era manual on trade and navigation in the Indian Ocean, which is justly renowned uh, for providing contemporary and a descriptive account of early uh, Indian Ocean trade, serving as both uh, 
a starting point and a subject for several research. And I was quite amazed, Professor, to come across such terms uh, that uh, were used back in the day during uh, history lessons. So now allow me just to read some uh, feedback from uh, those who are watching. Wambui Wagitaka is saying, Reverend Professor Lawrence, congratulations. And um, uh, Mili, Mili Mili also says, congratulations, uh, Professor. Peter Gidi, thank you for watching. Mary Gatonye, congratulations, Father Lawrence. And uh, Jaylene Kahugu, we are watching. Thank you all who are watching. We also have a... Some of those are my parishioners. Oh, wow, interesting. Uh, thank you for keeping tabs. We also have on our YouTube platform those who are following. Salome Mwaura says she is watching from Juja. Then we have Jack Muia. Thank you, Jack, for tuning in. Masio Duor says, great history. Indeed, it is great history, the very foundation of our faith. Uh, Sister Masango, uh, okay, thank you, Sister, for uh, following. We have Nicodemus Muneni, following from Radix Hotel, Karen. Thank you very much, uh, Nicodemus. J Jack says, from, uh, he's watching from Juja at St. Augustine Parish, supporting our own, proud of you, Father, and your grace. Thank you very much all for your feedback. If you have any questions, keep them coming. You can drop them on our social media platforms, YouTube and Facebook. Our number remains 0717-424-866. So welcome back to the second session, Your Grace. And uh, I will uh, uh, start with you on our next question. Mm, so much, so many theories have uh, hypothesized that technology and social media have uh, greatly affected the culture of reading and uh, the conventional physical interaction with the text that we are used to. So the youth today prefer to read and uh, uh, just uh, to read uh, from the digital platforms and spending more time on short articles as opposed to so many pages. We have a book which is uh, 528 pages. What is the beauty of interacting with the physical text, the traditional way? Yeah, uh, we are going very fast away from the uh, traditional uh, contents of uh, books, reading and such. Mm -hmm. uh, however, I want also to commend uh, the direction we are going. Mm -hmm. uh, a human person is uh, always indulged to growth and development. And uh, development must not, uh, should not swallow uh, our interactions with one another, mm -hmm. and especially with God himself. But mm -hmm. it should even refine it in a way that we are closer to one another. Uh, media is also encouraged in, uh, in, uh, in our faith and in our understanding of faith. Because that is one of also, at present, is one of the, I mean, one of the easiest and one of the most available uh, way for young people to interact with uh, with one another, mm -hmm. uh, but as also we understand it, uh, we encourage every young person, every person who is using media, to use it very cautiously because it can also cause uh, bring bad repercussions on its uh, because it will draws you away from the real material things. You know, mm -hmm. in the beginning I used to write with the two fingers and. Uh, at one time I was told by a young person, you know, you are taking a lot of time by writing two fingers and God has given you ten fingers. Mm -hmm. You write very fast. <laughs> and I, write as I said, ah, I never knew that. Mm -hmm. And I will learn. I will learn right now with ten fingers on, mm -hmm. my, on my, uh, my computer and such like things. Mm -hmm. And I do it. And I communicate. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it depends what I'm communicating. If I'm communicating something worth it, then it's very important. Mm -hmm. So as it were, we use our fingers, we use our mind. You know, our body is being involved in everything that is communication. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, let us learn in the way God himself communicates in the whole Trinitarian way. Mm -hmm. uh, God, Father, God, Son, and Holy Spirit, they communicate. And we are given that gift of, by the, of the Holy Spirit by Jesus Christ himself so that we, it will teach us, the Holy Spirit will teach us to communicate in a more, a more special way in the current situation environments of our lives. Mm -hmm. So what we can do only to encourage young, our young people and everybody else who is exposed to the media uh, to be mindful that... Uh, is just one of many other better thing, better ways of 
uh, knowing and dealing with God. Because God himself also, uh, we remember he wrote once or twice down mm -hmm. and he, he did not have a major materials to read and open unless himself he was looking, look at me, mm -hmm. look at me, I'm the Christ. Uh, so himself was the subject. The cardinal too also say, is look at me. Mm -hmm. uh, he did not write me very much and say maybe today, uh, whatever the content is there, but always uh, the major example was that look at me. Mm -hmm. So the young people and everybody else, uh, let us first of all agree that we are the first script, the first writing of God in the lives. We present ourselves in that way. So that whatever we do in our media mm -hmm. communication, whatever we do in our, in our hard, hard copies, let uh, it, it reflect God. Because he created us, as uh, also Cardinal has always told us, uh, to know him more and to love him so as to serve him. Mm -hmm. The spirit of service uh, calls the whole entire person to do that. Mm -hmm. So I encourage the young people uh, to think about God in whatever communication they are using to one Thank another. You. Thank you very much, Your Grace. I think the message uh, is uh, home. As usual on Around the Table show, we inculcate and encourage uh, to embrace the young people, to embrace the culture of uh, reading, especially interacting with the conventional materials that were used before. It gives that beauty to blend, as His Grace puts it. Now, you could be asking yourself, uh, what do, how do, uh, do you think this book can be of interest to you? Uh, this is a question that I wish to direct it uh, to the author, Professor Lawrence. How relevant is the gist of this book to today's younger generation, what we call the millennials, the new millennials, the Z generation or Zoomers? Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. If you look at the book from chapters 1 to 6, I have basically used sources, archives, and as I mentioned, I have visited quite a number of archives, both in this country and outside of this country. Mm -hmm. I did something new in Chapter 7. In Chapter 7, it is not so much Lawrence Jiroga who is speaking. Mm -hmm. I have interviewed 32 people. I formulated questions. Those questions were moderated by persons from the University of Nairobi, from KU, JKU Art, the Catholic University, Tangaza, Hekima, from all the universities around. They moderated five, six questions, which I then asked that two people to answer. Now, some of the persons that answered those questions are young people. There is a section on the millennials and on Zoomers and on the Z generation here. Mm -hmm. Therefore, in short, in chapter seven, it is not so much Lawrence Jiroga speaking, it is other people responding to those questions. For example, the question you raised earlier on, mm -hmm. are persons coming into the church or are persons leaving the, the church? church? I posted that question to a professor in KU Professor Philomena Mwaura, who deals with uh, matters of ecumenism and matters of dynamics in the church. Mm -hmm. This book is relevant because in chapter 7, there are the voices of 32 persons, including bishops, including theologians, including catechists, including ordinary faithful, including young people. And therefore, this book is not simply about history. Mm -hmm. It is about the contemporary issues. We are dealing with the problems of uh, unemployment. We are dealing with the problems of uh, drug uh, abuse, mm -hmm. with the problems of relationships. Therefore, it is relevant because I conducted the research and the last questions asked were asked in March of the year 2022. Mm -hmm. And it also takes into account the challenge of COVID-19. Yeah, please yes. uh, allow me to cut yes, you please. short yes. because you have touched on that. Just my next question, which is uh, currently the country is plagued with a plethora of uh, challenges, social, economic, and political. Uh, how does the book address uh, these challenges facing Kenya today, such as unemployment, uh, uh, radicalism, climate change, and all that? Yes. Those matters have all been touched on in the book, mm -hmm. various persons. For example, 
When the Holy Father came to Kenya in the year 2015, his first act was to go to Gigiri. Mm-hmm. And he planted uh, a single indigenous tree. And there is a lesson to be learned from that. Because the education department in the Archdiocese of Nairobi, and that is Father Carey's department, they began following up on the activity of the Holy Father. And they began a program of tree planting in all the Catholic sponsored schools Mm -hmm. in the Archdiocese of Nairobi. And therefore, you have a challenge, climate change. What is the Catholic Church doing about it? The Department of Education in the Archdiocese of Nairobi is working with students in beginning to address that. And the cue was taken from the Holy Father himself. And therefore, from faith to action. And uh, when it comes to matters of uh, unemployment, for example, asking students in tertiary institutions and in other institutions to be entrepreneurial, etc., etc. Mm-hmm. You have Catholic organizations like the Young Christian Students, See, Judge, Act. And therefore, yes, we are looking, identifying issues, identifying challenges, identifying problems, and then seeing how problems can be transformed into challenges to be overcome. In other words, that from our faith, we take practical action. See, judge, act. Thank Thank you you very much, uh, Professor. That's quite apt. And uh, uh, back to you, Your Grace. Uh, The country is still coping and uh, trying to digest uh, the Shakaola aura. One of the most shocking events in our country, I would say, the uh, doom, today doomsday cult. How does the genesis of our faith, uh, the church as chronicled in many books, including this one, the Beyond Century of Endeavor, shield us from uh, such religious extremisms that we have been witnessing lately in our society? Mm, Shakaola is a very sad and absurd situation that happens in our life today. Uh, and God forbid that uh, it shouldn't happen as it's going on, on and on again, because it's not anything human, it's not anything near uh, human thought as such. Uh, so Shakahola, as far as I understand it and as far as I can talk about it, it's not anything to do with religion. It has nothing to do with the God and his, his creation, that's yeah. human humanity. Mm-hmm. But it's something to do with it. Uh, maybe God, a uh, human person against God's own creation as such. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that one, we condemn that. They say it cannot happen that because uh, in our context as we understand is that God creates uh, the human persons and he journeys with them with the tender care and the service of our, our, through our leaderships and such. Our mm-hmm. pastors, we should be offering services as such and bring people closer to God himself in a manner of, uh, like the like Father said, a man of their lives and uh, the nature relationship with themselves and the, even the nature, the natural in- environments and such. But if it doesn't work that way, mm. then I think it is something against God. We talk about human dignity, mm-hmm. integrity, human, human dignity. And uh, uh, in the Catholic Church and uh, in my faith, I know from the word go, uh, from the word past, uh, conception, uh, human dignity should be respected already, even mm-hmm. from that beyond. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you cannot say uh, you are doing one, two, three things to do away with the, with the human life and you are doing the work of what is not there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we, we have to be careful also because even at uh, the time of Jesus Christ said, be careful because prophets are going to come mm-hmm. uh, who will be doing even evil things and then they say, I'm doing it in the name of God. It's not in the name of God. Mm-hmm. It's not, yeah, it's not, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, God, first of all, look at a human person and a human person needs dignity because he's in his own image, he got his own image and likeness. Mm-hmm. So you cannot destroy that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank uh, you very much, you are grace. Uh, Professor Njoroge, uh, mm-hmm. can the message embedded in this book somehow help us uh, maybe uh, uh, try to make sense of what is really right or not about our religion, about our faith, and uh, t- to detect the false prophets as his grace puts it? Yes, one agrees fully with uh, what His Grace has said. Mm-hmm. 
when you look at scripture, when you look at Jesus Christ, he says very, very clearly, and uh, his grace put it in a slightly different way. Jesus says, I came so that they may have life and have it more abundantly. And you cannot see the giving of life in Shakahola. Mm -hmm. The book, A Beyond Century of Endeavor, A History of the Catholic Church in Kenya, is a narrative of the contribution of the missionaries to our having life more abundantly. And then we remember very, very vividly what uh, Pope Paul the Sixth said in Uganda when he visited uh, Africa in the year 1969. Mm -hmm. He said to the African bishops and to the African church, you must be missionaries to yourselves. And therefore, the church has been inculturated in our situation, and its responsibility is to continue giving life and giving it more abundantly. What I have tried to do in this book is give a narrative. And of course, in giving a narrative, you select from here and there. This is a narrative of how men and women are faithful to the gospel mm -hmm. and how they labored in order to give life and to give it more abundantly. And I have done it in an ecumenical setting, meaning I am dealing not only with the Catholic Church, but I have given an account of the Anglican contribution, the Presbyterian contribution, mm -hmm. the Methodist contribution to the giving of life in this country. So long as it has its genesis and it has its foundation in Christ himself. Thank you. Therefore, we are celebrating the ancestors in the faith. Thank you very much, Professor. Thank you. Thank you for that. Now, I'll direct this question to His Grace Agnolo. Mm, the legacy of uh, His Eminence uh, Maurice Michael Cardinal Otunga will remain forever in history as a uh, one who had the ability to bring on board lay people as uh, pastoral agents. Could you please, Your Grace, expound on this reality uh, for the community that is watching and those who are here present? Yeah, yeah I thank you very much. And uh, looking back again at the contribution of uh, His Eminence Cardinal Maurice Watunga, uh, I mentioned after he, was, he attended the Second Vatican Council and uh, it's after that, uh, with the spirit that had been ignited into the, into the church, a new spirit of bringing people onto the same board, uh, uh, on the same board to us, uh, evangelization uh, emerged. And uh, he continued the same very spirit uh, in his evangelization uh, in such a way that uh, the Archdiocese of Nairobi, where he was, and indeed, the entire church in Kenya and the Amesea uh, uh, countries where it was most effective and most visible at any time. Uh, we can see that together with other uh, conferences, uh, the many things have happened. Uh, we talk of small Christian communities which are there to enhance the uh, incultured message of Christ in our daily lives. Mm -hmm. uh, we see in the social aspect, the social gospels, mm -hmm. um, where in the area where we have been having a lot of uh, refugees and immigrants, uh, there are these ministries in giving, to give service to such like people. We see many other things, like education. Uh, uh, education has taken on another notch uh, ever since uh, uh, even the missionaries uh, left and the Africans took over in all other churches also, uh, education has taken a rather higher notch. And uh, what brings us even more closer uh, to what he, uh, he did and what we should do is like, uh, education was also uh, a sense of dialogue. Mm, dialogue on the, on, the one, on one side, 
amongst the people, educators themselves and such. Mm -hmm. But at the same time also, on the other side, even with the governments uh, who are supposed to instill education into the lives of people in their nations as such. Thank I you. want to encourage that such a spirit continues uh, even within our, our own countries, the spirit that is going to ignite um, the very same spirit of Cardinal amongst us in which he brought into education, talk of Limuru, talk of where, talk mm -hmm. of so many others, mm -hmm. and the spirit of family life which uh, he instilled in our lives. Mm -hmm. Let us talk about it that our lives will be, our fa the families will be refreshed in their way, in relationship to God as such. A sense of nearness to God because he himself was to bring people closer to God as such. So he has quite a good deal of uh, things that we can learn from and I want to set an example um, to him to set an example to us as mm -hmm. we look forward uh, towards his uh, beatification and canonization. I want to ask every Kenyan uh, Catholic and non-Catholic people of good will, all Kenyans, that we have a person amongst us mm -hmm. you know, who lived amongst us and who has set an example for us to live together in unity. Thank you, Thank Your you. Grace. Yeah, you unity. Just one on that. Okay. Uh, your Grace has answered. One minute, okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Just one statement. All right. When he arrived in the Archdiocese of Nairobi in 1969, as to help uh, Archbishop J.G. McCarthy and then took over as Archbishop in the year 1971. One of Cardinal Otunga's major activities was the foundation of the Baraza Lawaumini. He founded it together with the other bishops. Mm -hmm. And I remember very, very clearly persons like Michael Avum, who was then the Deputy Commissioner of Police, mm -hmm. being appointed being appointed as being as one of the leaders in the Baraza Lawa mm -hmm. Persons like uh, Peter Carey, Dr. Peter Carey, who comes from Rio, and also Mr. Mwaura, um, uh, who comes from Meguta Parish. I visited him two weeks ago. He is one of the Few, the only surviving person who accompanied Cardinal Otunga to go to Rome in 1973 when he was being created Cardinal, and all those persons were in the Baraza La Waumini, yeah. the lay apostolate council. Interesting, quite interesting and engrossing, I, I, I believe. And uh, the, the virtual and the interactivity uh, is quite overwhelming. There are so many people who are following. Just yes. allow me to go through some of their messages. We have Wambui Wagitaka who says, Congratulations, Professor Lawrence. Jirije, Jirije Kimeto says, What a great milestone. Waiting to read the book about our church history. Congratulations, your Reverend and your Lordship Bishop Agnola, of course, because you took part in uh, writing the preface, I believe. Congratulations, Reverend F Professor, and my own Reverend, his Lordship Bishop Agnolo, God guide you. Uh, this is uh, Mongina from Kericho. Thank you very much, Mongina uh, Tricia. We have a lot of feedback. Uh, Koigi Wanarua says he's following from Juja. Congratulations to Reverend Professor Father. We are proud of our own from St. Augustine, Juja. And uh, Hadstone Maui says, uh, watching from St. Patrick Thika. Congratulations, my Godfather Professor. And then uh, uh, we have uh, Jane Ngubia watching from Riruta Parish. The history is great. Congratulations, Reverend Professor Father Lawrence, and regards to his uh, grace, Philip Agnolo. Thank you, Jane. I, I believe uh, the greetings are home. And then Cizi Teuri says he's watching from uh, uh, Juja Heko Padriway to Marvin Musonda following from Rome. Wow, interesting. Great and mind blowing. That is uh, Marvin Musonda's comment. Yes, Marvin was my student once yes. upon a time. Thank you, Marvin, for following all the way from the nerve of the Roman Catholic Church. And uh, we continue to. Uh, uh, understand as we are headed towards uh, wrapping up this, but uh, the book. Uh, uh, Father is um, bears the Catholic authorship, but the issues addressed 
cut across the different denominations, Christian denominations and religions. How does the global faith community benefit from reading this book? Did you have them as part of your uh, target audience when you're setting out to write briefly, kindly? Yes, this book is ecumenical meaning it takes into account the existence of persons of faith, persons who confess Jesus Christ as their Lord, though they are not in the Roman Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. One way to make sure that we addressed human issues and global issues was in the very framing of the questions that I addressed to the 32 persons. Mm -hmm. The persons that were the moderators of those questions were not just the Catholics. There were many persons from other faiths. As I said, I consulted people from not only Jomo Kenyatta University, but from KU, from the University of Nairobi, from the Catholic University, Tangaza, mm -hmm. Hekima, and not just uh, Catholics. And uh, I made sure to bring in a person who is a specialist in the area of ecumenism, mm -hmm. in the area of other churches and uh, other faiths. The very, very fact, uh, the first chapter, the opening chapter, is on Christianity on in an Islamist on an Islamist coast mm -hmm. that is on a coast that is already has embraced the Islamic faith and the very very fact that some of the persons consulted even in the moderation of the questions and therefore here we have a book it focuses on the Catholic Church there is no doubt about that but it is inclusive inclusive because it embraces other Christians, it embraces other persons of faith, and it embraces humanity. The very concern, for example, with the climate change mm -hmm. and with what can we do about improving the lives of young persons in Kenya. Mm -hmm. That is a question that affects not only Roman Catholics, it is a national issue. It is a human question and therefore the book is relevant also from that perspective thank you very much and uh, i wish just uh, to invite uh, uh, his lordship before we welcome those who are here pl present to unveil uh, this copy and uh, get a message uh, Most Reverend Philip Agnolo, uh, we witnessed the efforts of the Catholic Church in uh, encouraging people to embrace the spirit of uh, ecumenism and interreligious dialogue. In the book, you find how uh, there, there was some intolerance uh, of uh, the different denominations. Uh, how important is that to us? I want to encourage that we read the book. Mm -hmm in view of in igniting our faith. Mm -hmm. uh, it will ignite our nationalism. It will ignite our common understanding about God as our creator, all of us. Mm -hmm. It will ignite that sense of brotherhood amongst ourselves as mm -hmm. such. So mm -hmm. it's an important book. And that is being also launched on such a day of the feast of Peter and, uh, and Paul I think it, it's just uh, something that uh, earmarks a very important aspect of our understanding in Christianity. Because, mm -hmm. you know, Paul and Peter actually sometimes come in our way of life as Christians, in our way of polarization. Mm -hmm. So we are for Peter, we are for Paul, and we know uh, I'm not a Catholic, I'm a person for mm -hmm. Paul and such like things, I'm faith alone, and many things, many things come from there, mm -hmm. and they redirect our way of faith. But uh, as we look at it on such a feast, where the Christianity, where God is telling us, um, Paul and Peter are brothers, and they belong to the same mother. Uh, Christianity is the mother. I think is a wonderful day that will calls on us that uh, we look at, read this book and understand that it's talking about not only Catholics, not only Christians, mm -hmm. but every other Kenyan. 
especially in this moment where we get sometimes some uh, historical misunderstandings amongst ourselves and uh, such like things. Such a book will unite us in the sense the missionaries who came, uh, Christianity that uh, the message of Christianity that is there in uh, can do best. And I think we want to say with this book, God is with us. With this book, life is present in us. Mm -hmm. uh, this book denotes the living life, actually. is not a dead tool to us, life, but it's really an ignition of life, a uh, real life of nationalism, real life of Christianity within us in Kenya. So thank you Absolutely. for this. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much, Your Grace. And at this point, as promised earlier on, I welcome those who are following us uh, uh, here, physical audience, to join us as we uh, display this book to you. Uh, it took an wavering effort of, for many to plant and water the Catholic faith in Kenya and the efforts that have been traced back to 1498 and Professor Lawrence Njoroge had to interview 32 people as he mentioned before who were involved uh, in evangelization missions to give the book a broader perspective and uh, my camera people will just help us to, to highlight to just show uh, this book and uh, those who are present here uh, to have a look. So in this book, Century of Endeavor, A History of the Catholic Church in Kenya, the author vividly engages your cognitive and thought process with a fierce denominational rivalry sparking confusion among uh, uh, potential converts. There is, uh, of course, at some point when they have to unite. It's sort of a legendary or dynasty movie if you are to watch uh, a, a movie that is written in text, which is familiar to ancient missionary hallmarks and landmarks. You just get to encounter this uh, on this text as you keep on reading. You will definitely enjoy reading this, but uh, before I let you know how you can grab a copy of your own, I, I just wish to pass my microphone over to uh, those who are here just uh, to, to introduce themselves. I'll start with them. Good evening, everybody. My name is George, and I work with Father Lawrence Jiroga, the author. Thank you. My name is Joanna Tino Dawa. Thank you. Good evening, and thank you very much for all those who have followed us. And the, my name is Sister Olga Masango from Pauline's Publications Africa. Good evening, all. My name is Lynette. My name is Tom. Uh, together, by the love of Christ, we share one name, Lichuma. Good evening. I'm Father Vincent. Congratulations, Father Lawrence, for this great book. I think it's an inspiration for the church, current church in Kenya. Good evening. My name is James Mongare. I work at the Daughters of St. Paul. I will promote the books and the gospel. Thank you very much. I want to thank His Grace the Archbishop for his support. I want to support Pauline's Publications Africa, Capuchin TV, and all persons that are participating in uh, anyway through this means. And also, I would like to thank, I know that my mother, Susan Wanjiko, is watching from home. Wow. Thank you. And I want to thank my mother. <laughs> All right, all right. Thank you very much, you all. And uh, uh, Your Grace, do you have something to say to the person watching and those here present? Oh, yeah, thank you. I will encourage again and again that we read this book, uh, The Century of Encounter, and encounter ourselves in it as we look forward into a united, to us, a united nation, a united uh, Christianity, a united family of God. Mm -hmm. 
All right, uh, we are uh, requested, maybe before we get uh, some blessings from His Grace as we put this book forth, allow me to remind you that you can get a copy of this book at the Pauline's uh, Communication Center situated along uh, Ring Road in Westland, where we are right now. Uh, there is a collection that have been arranged quite systematically. Whatever book that you need, you're going to get it there. You can get it also at, from the Catholic Bookshop at the Holy Family Basilica in Nairobi, CBD. We have also Pauline's Books and Media Center in Kisumu that was uh, opened recently off Kisumu Kakamega Highway next to Dominican Friars and also a copy from uh, Gabriela House of Bogani Road in Karen uh, next or close to the J. Quarter uh, University, that institutions of higher learning and a blessing. You can also place an order uh, virtually uh, through the Pauline's uh, publication Africa website www.paulinesafrica.org right sister yes yes okay so thank you very much and uh, at this point I invite his grace to and the book also is available on Amazon yes, great interesting great that that is uh, okay thank you for that uh, sister Masango so you're welcome your grace in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. At this time, before we six, we shall say the angels of the Lord. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and he Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are among women, and blessed fruit of your home, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are among all women, and blessed the fruit of your own Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the word was made flesh. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are among all women, and blessed the fruit of your own Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that you may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pray. Well, for they beseech your Lord, your and grace into our hearts, that we through the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of the angel. May by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May he bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. St. Peter and Paul. Pray for us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I will remain with my two guests as we close the discussion. Okay. Thank you very much, team. Now, it wasn't an easy task cast about for information preserved for over a century ago for from archives to compile the facts and uh, imbue it with fresh knowledge. So I wish uh, first to welcome uh, the, he, Professor Njoroge for a parting shot in just a few seconds as we close the discussion. Yes. Thank you very much. In terms of gratitude, I want to thank very much the priests of the Archdiocese of Nairobi. I am a priest of the Archdiocese of Nairobi, and uh, we are in the same apostolate. Mm -hmm. I would like to thank them as a body corporate and also as individuals on account of uh, the solidarity, because that is where I belong even as I thank our Archbishop. Mm -hmm. so thank you very much, Elizabeth, for much this obliged. Mm -hmm. and uh, for the interview. Thank you also for honoring the call. And congratulations upon this. Again, we reiterate this is great, and uh, we hope other authors and writers also uh, emulate that and take a step up towards enlightening us more about our faith, the genesis of it all, and how far we've come. Uh, to you, Your Grace, I don't know how much I should thank you, but let me allow you first to give your parting shot. Uh, help here and thank you everybody and uh, today we have encountered the story of our life uh, Christian life through in the book that is written here let us uh, ignite our spirit ignite our spirit into a new life uh, that will set our 
desires to fulfillment in God and fulfillment in the service of one another. And let us pray uh, that the process we are in of uh, uh, canonization of uh, His Eminence, Cardinal Otunga, will bear fruit. Mm -hmm. uh, on the 6th of uh, September, uh, we shall hold again uh, prayers together that remind us about his life as reflected in the books today. And I encourage young people to read, to write, and to reflect on their lives in such a manner like Lawrence has done. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much for that parting shot, uh, your, uh, your grace. And uh, before I forget, our uh, colleague from uh, the transmission team says, uh, sends his greetings, yeah. Peter Mwangi Muheshimiwa, <laughs> who died last year in 2022 ah, general okay. elections. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Nasema Msalimu Askofu na Professor. Amimasalimu. Yes, so uh, allow me just uh, to uh, say, to mention this, that uh, uh, His Grace has from uh, my motherland, <laughs> Tongaren, I think we already have. Uh, <laughs> so from home, we are here representing Tongaren quite well. <laughs> it's mentioned. Wow, interesting. I, how, how would I? have missed that <laughs> so thank you very much thank for you. for heeding our call and uh, being here today with us thank and you. your insightful information thank and you. great information and faith thank, thank, you. thank you very much in fact the book ends with mama namisi mm -hmm. yes give, um, giving the last few last words mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, oh, or, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> Interesting. So at this point our uh, time is uh, up and uh, Joseph Kariuki, thank you. He was watching from Eldoret. Very informative and lively discussion. Thank you, Joseph Kariuki. Rita Staff Kuria, Archbishop and Reverend Father Njoroge, may, may God bless you. Uh, this is Rita from Nakuru. Uh, Tracy Wakoimbi, a book to read, learning more about our Catholic history. Congratulations, Father Njoroge. Then Ciara uh, uh, Macau, thank you. God bless us for the scripture. Uh, thank you very much, all who have taken your time. This has been the most interactive, I would like to say, session or a discussion on our Round the Table show. I bet because of the graces that His Grace brings on board and uh, the history of the Catholic Church, it's quite uh, of interest. And uh, as His Mehi mentioned, is that... Uh, he has already petitioned to Rome the novel of the Roman Catholic Church for the uh, beatification process, uh, the canonization of uh, the servant of God, Maurice Cardinal Otunga. So I'd like to appreciate all those who have been here. Uh, the Poland's communication team led by the director, Sister Nafula Praxidis, and the marketing head, that is Sister Olga Masango. Thank you very much for organizing this. I wouldn't forget uh, to thank uh, the Capuchin television crew. We have uh, the camera persons here, uh, Marvaton Charles and uh, Nganga. Thank you very much, uh, Venanzio Nganga. On a visual mixing, we have uh, Kevin Kitavi. And uh, on a sound, we have uh, Frederick Ocheng. All those who participated or contributed in one way or the other towards making this day successful, we appreciate you. And uh, may God bless you all, especially those who, co who give access to the archives. KCCB, AOSK, RSCK, all those. Thank you all. And put on the full armor of God to be able to resist the evil. And having done that, remain and stand firm. Your grace, if you allow me, I'll reiterate the final statement that you quoted in your preface, that may this book be forever a treasure for our spiritual growth. All right. I wish you a great Thursday evening and a a nice uh, view because I take you back to our normal programming back in uh, Karen. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>
I would like to appreciate the Capuchin TV. We are very, very grateful. And we always encourage people of goodwill, our Christians, to continue supporting the Capuchin TV. The only Catholic TV. The only one in Kenya. Imagine, the only one. So let us support them. They cover most of our masses here at the Basilica. So as individuals, as groups, let us support uh, Capuchin TV because they continue uh, reaching out, reaching out to the people of God, wherever they are, to be more and more uh, nourished uh, spiritually. So Captain TV, thank you. May God bless your ministry. Tuendele kufanya kazi, baby number 5106789. Account name Caps TV. 